2011 Ford Explorer driving impressions, a week in the all-new 2011 Ford Explorer. Good morning, I'm Steve from LotProVideo.com with today's auto news. A replacement for Ford's aging Bronco 2. The Ford Explorer first appeared in March of 1990 as a 1991 model and is largely credited for being responsible for the surge in sport utility vehicle sales during the ensuing decade. Sales of the Explorer peaked in 2000 when 445,157 were sold and although the Firestone tire rollover debacle subsequently cut into sales, Ford still managed to sell over 300,000 per year until 2005. And like the first, the three subsequent generations were all truck-based SUVs. That was all about the change when in 2008 Ford unveiled the Explorer America concept at the 2008 Detroit Auto Show. Based on a unibody platform, it signaled the Explorer's migration from a sport utility to a crossover utility vehicle based on the company's own research that demonstrated that less than 3% of Explorer owners ever left the tarmac. So, here we are in a new century and a new decade in which we welcome an all-new Explorer. Styling the Explorer, as with all large Ford vehicles, was the responsibility of the company's North American Design Center. Here's what that division's director, Maury Callum, had to say about the Explorer, and I quote, Ford has changed everything about the all-new Explorer, yet it's still instantly and instinctively recognizable as a Ford Explorer. We believe that's because it's a contemporary interpretation of the same capabilities Explorer has always stood for, without compromise. What is my opinion of the new design? I like it, a lot. By blacking out the B and D pillars, Ford has given the roof a cantilevered look that makes this large CUV look much more open and airy. In front, the body-colored three-bar grille carries over the corporate design philosophy first seen in the new Taurus. In back, the inverted L-shaped LED taillights give it not a touch, but a large dose of class. Chrome is used sparingly on the lower body sills, door handles, exhaust finishers, and a thin strip that runs across the tail tailgate between the upper portions of the taillights. Moving on, this is what interior studio manager Mike Arbaugh had to say about the interior, and again I quote, Make it look expensive. That was my goal for the new Explorer interior. This is a vehicle that challenges higher-end SUVs like BMW X5 and Audi Q7, so the interior design, craftsmanship, and fit and finish should play in that league. In fact, my first thought on entering the Explorer was that it easily could have been an Audi. The interior of our Limited was, in a word, spectacular. The seats were finished in black with pecan perforated leather inserts. Soft touch surfaces abounded and the gray of the dash and door surfaces were set off by brushed aluminum and piano black trim, a simple elegance rarely found in domestic vehicles. All in all, I found very little to quibble about. My only nitpick involved a large 8-inch touch screen in the center console. The amount of information it's required to convey to the driver can, at times, be a bit overwhelming, and finding just the right area on it to place your finger, especially when driving, can be distracting. Moving on, to say that the Explorer Limited is well equipped is an understatement. Its standard equipment includes features such as three row seating, sync with my Ford Touch, dual zone climate control, Sony 12 speaker audio with HD and Sirius satellite radio, rear view camera, and remote start. Our Explorer was equipped with what they call a rapid spec four wheel drive 202A package, which adds a power lift gate, rain sensing wipers, power folding rear seat, active park assist, adaptive cruise control, cross traffic alert, HID headlamps, voice activated navigation system, and heated and cooled front seats. Both the standard as well as the option list go on, but I'm sure you get the idea. Base price of a limited model is currently $39,190 and with the rapid spec package adding another $4,105. But we're not finished yet. White platinum metallic tricoat paint and a trailer towing package added $495 and $570 respectively, while destination and delivery comes to $805. 
This brought the total MSRP of our example to exactly $45,160. As far as driving dynamics are concerned, although Ford may have 86 most of the Explorer's off-road capabilities with the redesign, the new model absolutely excels on the highway. The Explorer feels well placed on the highway and its suspension soaks up potholes and railroad tracks with aplomb. Cabin noise is nearly library quiet at all speeds and turns and evasive maneuvers are executed with a minimum of fuss. Keep in mind that at 4,700 pounds, it's hardly something you'll feel like tossing around. But then again, drivers so inclined will probably not put an Explorer on their shopping lists anyway. Until the new EcoBoost 4 is available, all Explorers, as ours was, will be equipped with Ford's Lime Ohio built 3.5 liter dual overhead cam V6 that produces 290 horsepower and 255 pound-feet of torque. My average observed fuel economy over a week of primarily city driving was 18.8 .8 miles per gallon. So what's the bottom line? Well, if the new Explorer is Ford's idea of an extreme makeover, we'll tune into this program every week. It looks handsome on the outside, and its interior is absolutely stunning. Its front-to-drive quotient notwithstanding, the new Ford Explorer raises the bar of the crossover utility class to a new level. It looks to me like Ford has another big winner on their hands. This is Steve from LotPro.com Video. Have a great day.